to my mind, I don't think it's a major force. I mean, uh, whether inflation is on the average 2% or 5%, it's not a big factor in economic growth. It's when the inflation rate really shoots up where uh, growth can, uh, can, uh, can suffer. Uh, I think uh, the, the um, main driving forces, have, they are innovative activity and technological change, but that cannot be the, uh, the only factor. There's got to be accumulation of productive ability to take advantage of the innovations, to take advantage of the research and development, to take advantage of what's being discovered. We need, but we need incentives to invest in this new capital, and that's where the government uh, policy may be beneficial, or it could be detrimental to such growth. I'll give Argentina as an example where government policy has, in my mind, clearly been de detrimental to long-run growth, and then I'll use Ireland as an example of the opposite. Uh, so here's a picture of what has happened in Argentina in the past 50 or 55 years. Um, you saw the first picture, so you know uh, you know that even over this period, in, in your early portion, it wasn't as if Argentina was growing that fast, but by, by the standards of the whole uh, last 50 or 60, 60 years, the first 30 years were pretty good. This, by the way, is in proportional scale, and so uh, um, one centimeter increase up here is the same as one, same percent increase as a one percent centimeter uh, increase down here. Uh, in 1980, a great depression ensued. Um, GDP per working age person, which is what this chart is about, fell more than 20%, just an astounding drop in economic activity. Then, as you can see, the economy recovered uh, in mo during most of the 1990s, and then there was another drop from 1998 to about 2002 or 2003. This drop was just as large, if not larger, and it took place over a shorter period of time, over five years instead of uh, instead of just four or five years, instead of ten years in, in the 1980s. To write the paper for a conference, write a paper about the 1980s. And we did, and uh, we thought we came up with some interesting findings and, and so on. Um, now, we decided to go beyond that. And this was not for the conference, but simply for, uh, for our own uh, uh, fun, almost. We had the data going well beyond, beyond uh, 1990. We had the data for the whole, all of 1990s and into uh, uh, the 2000s. We, we put the numbers into a, um, a uh, standard business cycle model constructed on the assumption that everything would be working fine, uh, constructed, calibrated to the Argentine economy, and we had a big surprise. The model said that in light of the productivity increases in, uh, in Argentina, even in the 1990s, when you saw, as you saw, it looked like, like Argentina grew pretty fast, it should have grown even faster. Um, the capital stock should have been substantially larger at the end of the century. Uh, I'm sorry, the decade. Uh, Here's an illustration of the contrast between the data and the model. Now, I'll uh, point out that in, in the previous chart, every, everything was in terms of GDP per working age person. Uh, 
this is total GDP. Uh, so the drop in the 1980s, for example, will not show up as a big drop because at the same time there was, there was also a population increase. Uh, this is, these are the data. The model says this is what should have happened to Argentina over this period. Following pretty well the data in the 80s, but in the 90s, the model said that Argentina should have grown substantially faster. I view that as almost like a thermometer. If you had looked at this uh, in the 1990s, you would have said, there, there must be fever. This, this patient doesn't have a temperature of 37. This patient has a temperature of maybe 39 or 40. This is a sign of potentially some disease. Even worse, if you look at the best measures of, of capital, the sum of all the factories and machines and uh, office buildings, all, all the productive capacity of Argentina, here are the data. This is what the model said should have happened. Investments should have taken place much faster than it did in the, in the 1990s. We take this as a sign that Argentina suffered from a disease. We call it the time inconsistency disease. The disease, I was trying to explain to you the funda fundamental reason for it earlier. Uh, and this, the reason Argentina suffered from that disease had to do with our past behavior. Not because of the way Carlos Menem behaved. He, he tried to do pretty well given the current situation, given uh, the expectations that existed, but he could not overcome the, uh, the uh, memories of past hyperinflations, past evaluations, past deposit freezes, past default on government obligations. He could not overcome the resulting lack of credibility among, not just among investors in Argentina, but also among investors in other countries who might think about investing in Argentina. This is a very depressing picture for Argentina. When I first saw it, I thought, oh my god, this is, this is terrible. Uh, this is the capital stock per working age person from 1980 until uh, 2003. And as, as you can see, the peak was in around 1981, 82. Since then, into 2003, uh, I suppose I should have updated the numbers, but uh, and I think they have turned around, but by 2003, 20 years later, the capital stock per working age person, per potential worker, the capital stock was 20% lower. Now the economic implications of, of that are uh, terrible. It means that the, uh, it would predict that the real wages, the uh, salaries of workers would be declining over time rather than increasing as, as happens in most developed countries. Uh, the, uh, the implications for the poor are likely to be particularly severe. In, in bad times, the people with higher human capital, the higher skills, they tend to do relatively okay. Uh, not as well as if the capital stock had been higher, but uh, they tend to do okay. The poor are the ones who really suffer. And the poverty levels in Argentina had risen uh, steadily over this period. Can Argentina recover? It has recovered in the, in the past three or four years, uh, but it, it's not so clear yet that it has recovered for the duration. Argentina tends to focus a lot about on a very short run. There's little discussion of what it takes for Argentina to grow in the long run. There's little focus on what policies are needed uh, what policy environment is needed for the next 5, 10, 20 years. And that's what it takes. 
um, Argentina will need to restore its confidence in economics. That's one of the things we know least about. We don't we don't know so much about what it takes. Once you've lost confidence, once you lost credibility, how can you how can you recover? It's not easy. Let me just uh, spend the last. Uh, three or four minutes, uh, maybe, on, on some more general lessons for, for policy. I already uh, mentioned the importance of incentives for pro uh, productivity growth and capital accumulation. Um, government policy needs to be credible and forward looking. And, and this is a good time to take the opposite example, namely that of the Celtic Tiger, Ireland. Ireland, I'm not saying that these are the only two factors behind Ireland's success, but they have to have been very important. One is, Ireland had done relatively poorly for decades. Most of their population had uh, left for other countries, for the United States, for Britain, and so on, they had been losing many of their most, most, uh, uh, many of their best educated people. Um, Ireland decided in uh, around 1960 or in the 1960s to make secondary education free of charge. Um, as a consequence, 20 years later, Ireland finds itself with a potentially quite skillful workforce. By 1990, the education level among the population in Ireland was quite high. Uh, they didn't, it's true they didn't have machines to, with which to put them to use, or, or their computers, or, uh, or otherwise uh, technological knowledge to, 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 to put their potential skill to use. So what did the government do? They, uh, made it clear to potential investors, not just within Ireland, but also in other nations, that if you uh, built your capacity to produce in Ireland, it, this took place around 1990, if you build your capacity in Ireland, the taxes facing you will be so-and-so, and these were uh, relatively mild taxes, the, Taxes facing you will be so and so, not just next year when the factories are uh, finished, uh, but also these will be the taxes the year after, the year after, up through 2009. For 20 years. Uh, on the assumption that this uh, announcement was credible and that it, there's every, every indication that it had been credible, uh, I guess Ireland never did anything to try to fool people the way Argentina has done. Uh, this was this was evidently credible and it removed an important source of uncertainty facing the investors. As a result, Ireland has grown spectacularly for 20 years. Uh, we need institutions here to avoiding the tiny consistency disease. An example of such an institution is the independent central bank to conduct monetary policy to provide a low inflation environment, which is which we know is conducive to growth. 